Hey guys, Steeple here. Today I got to look at the Guide for you. That's the Tier Five German Destroyer. Here you can see my bay build on the screen. I'm still planning on experimenting with that slot number two for the perks as I go down the line. Not a bad place to start right now. I've been having a fair amount of success with that build. Uh, this match we got on Ring. It's a domination mode game. German destroyers, uh, tier five through seven particularly, I think are either the strongest uh, objective capture ships or right up there in terms of, uh, you know, probably with the USN destroyers. So definitely want to be playing the objectives with these ones. We're going to go straight for D right off the bat. Now, this ship, I mean, take a look at it. It's like, it's about as long as some cruisers. It's probably longer than some, <laughs> like the Milwaukee comes to mind or something like that, but... I've been kind of playing it as a destroyer cruiser hybrid. I'm running the 150 millimeter guns. I'm finding a lot of success with those. I've been seeing some discussion in my Discord back and forth on which caliber guns people prefer on the ship. It's definitely not a settled question. I would definitely experiment with both of them, see which one works better for you. I think the smaller caliber guns have better DPM numbers, penetration and um, raw damage going to be better on the 150s. We'll talk a little bit more about those in a little bit here. Opening move though, Pensacola right off the bat. He's going broadside. I'm capturing the cap. I'm expecting a destroyer to come in, but we are loading AP for this Pensacola. I would like to get at least one torpedo salvo off. You see I aim it just in front of that island so we don't get any strikes in there. That's to mask the fact that there's torpedoes in the water. If they hit the island, it creates a splash, and that lets them know torps are inbound. Now, take a look at these damage numbers when we're hitting this Pensacola with the AP. Um, very strong AP on these German destroyers. Especially these 150s, we're going to be bringing up 4,000 salvos left and right. Now, that was only one shot landing there, but it was a citadel. Pensacola, obviously, very easy to citadel that ship, but... The key to these German destroyers, a lot of the damage should be coming from the guns in my opinion and it's like the cruisers, you're going to be wanting to actively use an AP when you have broadside shots and then switching to HE when you don't. I did briefly switch to the HE there get another salvo off but the Pensacola is turning the other way, opening this broadside back up. It looks like I was the primary ship that was spotting this guy so he's going to kind of come in and out of detection but because he's back to broadside we got the AP loaded looking for shots. Now my engine was busted there, but because these torps are in the water, I do have to fix that. I don't want to use my damage con, especially with the destroyer inbound here, and those that probably could have been the end of my game there, but luckily for us, the torps do run out, and I do leave the smoke there. I was obviously trying to get momentum to dodge those torps, but ideally I would have liked to use that smoke until it ran out, but again, Broadside shots into that Pensacola, no problem taking him out. And the engine is broken again, but we're currently undetected. So I'm not in any hurry to, you know, get out of this particular position. I'm going to try and take it slow until my damage cons up. Now we're not spotted, so that means the destroyer is out of range. And that allows me to feel comfortable in using that damage con again. Now we got a moment to compare the guns here. I think the lower calibers are 120s. I might be wrong about that, but those on my build, you have a 4.7 second reload time, 1500 HE damage, 3000 AP damage, and a 6% chance to start a fire. 150s, the numbers come out to uh, 7 second reload. 2200 HE damage, 3700 AP damage, and a 12% chance to start fire. So you're doubling the fire chance, and 12% chance to start a fire on a destroyer is huge. I mean, there's looking down the entire destroyer roster, nothing compares to that. Um, I don't have the Moss or the Z23 yet, so I don't have the that HE chance might very well be very high on those two. I suspect it probably is, but I can't confirm that at the moment. But all of the ships I'm currently captaining, uh, the Gaiety is, you know, I think the next closest one's a 9% with the Gremiashi. 
nine uh, percent with a wakeful. So those are high damage or high fire starting chances for destroyers. Twelve percent is extremely high. So in my opinion, I'm going to be running the 150s all day long. But again, I would experiment with both of them. Now here we are able to catch up with the Mayhan here. And we're just going to start firing HE shots at him. Now, I think a lot of people discount the idea of armor angling with destroyers, but it is effective. I mean, take a look at these shots here. You know, they're basically shattering when he's angled here. Now, you still do get a chance to start a fire when the shots shatter, but we're not getting that raw base damage as well, so... In general, like taking AP shots from a battleship, for instance, you want to be broadside in that instance because the shots will overpen your ship, you'll be getting about a thousand damage. If you're angled towards the ship or away from the ship, you might, the shell might have enough time traveling through the ship to actually arm the fuse and then you'll be getting a lot more AP damage in that instance. So you kind of have to understand what's being fired at you, what ship's firing at you and then angle your ship appropriately but you know don't don't forget about your armor angling just because you're in a destroyer again <laughs> the, the mayhem's uh, short range torps kind of bails us out a couple times there now here I do have this Acosta pulling in and you see we get some torps in the water I fire one at him just in case he keeps charging but I'm assuming he's going to turn. He could turn either left or right, so I fired one, anticipating that. He does turn to my right, though, which is the opposite direction. But we're going to keep pumping him with these HE salvos. And we're doing a fair amount of damage here. Now, i got to assume when he's turning like this, we got to assume he's torping. Looking on the roster, there's only one destroyer left. I should be using the sonar here. That's a mistake. I need to... Granted, I can see him now, the sonar is useful for finding the destroyers when they're smoked up but it's also very useful for protecting yourself against torps so that would have been a good time to use that other sonar charge ship composition wise they have three cruisers to our two destroyers that's a massive advantage to their team in terms of ships we briefly have a lead in terms of score and capture points but as you can see they are now flipping B so this is a situation where we need to kill these two ships um, fairly quickly here to stay in this game now we do have a, looks like a full health Alba, and then a low health Nuremberg here. I'm angling away to create distance, waiting for those torps to load. And, again, armor angling. Now if they're shooting HE, it's probably not going to do much, but it doesn't hurt to keep that principle in mind at all times. But because the Alba is full health, we're going to try and get the torps in on him, and then potentially use the guns to eliminate the Nuremberg. Now, we, the fellow destroyer does have some torps in the water here. I am holding on to the shot, waiting for these torps to close in. Usually, players are going to react by getting the shot by turning. So, if you do have torps in the water, it's usually best to let them close in. We do switch to AP in anticipating these ships being broadside. That second self looks pretty solid. And he gone. So that ship's down. We're still undetected. I'm briefly holding on to the AP to see what he does, but we do need to start moving. He's closing into the detection range. So I'm going to switch back to HE here. And once they're loaded, we're going to just open up. And you can see here we're getting some decent damage here. It really should only take a couple salvos here. I do switch back to the AP now that he's broadside, but that should have probably just kept going with the HE. But, as you can see there, the AP is very effective into the broadside. We take him out. Now, at this point, I was playing one-handed. <laughs> I kind of wasn't anticipating anything going on here. We do have the torps up here out of the water. Again, I should have known that the Nuremberg had torps, used that sonar, and been paying more attention. So that's a little bit of a misplay. Well, not a little bit. That was a massive misplay on my part. Now normally here I'd just kind of skip forward to the end screen and show you how the results turned out. I thought this ending was fairly interesting though. We do have a Mutsuki on our team and about a half health Alba on their team. Mutsuki should lose that pretty much 9 out of 10 times. 
But this guy actually plays it pretty well, and it's an interesting finish, so I thought I'd check it out. As we're waiting for the ships to kind of get in range of each other, though, the Gaiety, very fast, 36 uh, knots in the water in terms of speed, horrible turn radius, 690 on that. The next closest is the Fubuki at 640, and that does come in play, you'll notice that, so keep that in mind. And the rudder shift 4.4, which is considerably higher. The next one on the team or on the tier is three with the Icarus. So normally, I think pretty much all my destroyers I have prop mod on for the module. I would consider switching that to steering gears. I haven't tried that yet, but now that I'm thinking about that, that would be an interesting option to cut that down and make it more destroyer esque. Usually, prop mod is going to help you with um, torque avoiding when you're like in a cloud you know dueling other destroyers that's why i usually prefer the prop mod but again this is a pretty significant rudder shift on this one and the detectability on this my build i do have a, the lowest at the tier right now 5.8 compared to 5.9 at the fubuki again my tanaka only has a level a 10 point commander on it right now so that will go down to the lowest detection at the tier once I add on the second concealment inspiration. But Gaidi, the way I have it set up right now, uh, it's actually a pretty stealthy ship. So again, I'm kind of fiddling around with that second tier in terms of a skill build on bay, but you know how I have it now, it's a ship concealment. And then I ha do have Bay, who affects Destroyer, Concealment, and Swirsky as an inspiration. So, pretty strong Concealment build, and I've been pretty happy with it, to be honest with you. Now, the Abo was able to flip this objective, but the Mutsuki is um, now attempting to capture it again. I think the Abo was just kind of sailing off, content to win on points. This Mutsuki now is putting down Torps to kind of zone that Abo and potentially clip him if he runs into those and it's an interesting play I mean I don't know what the Alba's doing that ship all he has to do is kind of rush his ship in terms of gun duel he should be able to slaughter it he does have sonar the ship has probably the worst guns of any destroyer <laughs> so the Alba on the enemy team is just kind of playing this incorrectly but because we flipped the ship now Currently, we're accruing points at the same rate, but if that Alba comes in here to contest the cap, then that cuts down on the points that we're going to be accruing, and then it could go back to winning on points. So, but again, I mean, he should just be able to come in here and <laughs> blast this guy away. You can also keep an eye on where he is roughly by where that plane's circling. You can just kind of look on the map and get a general idea, because it is making a perfect circle around that ship. Now he does pop out on around the island here. This is kind of the downside of using those torps preemptively to just zone areas like that is once he pops around here the ship is kind of defenseless at the moment. Uh, the Mutsuki's torp reload is about a minute on my build, 63 and a half seconds, so the ship is kind of <laughs> defenseless, but because this guy's kind of blind firing um, no offense, I think I just I think it's indicative of this player being kind of inexperienced. So <laughs> at this point, I'm watching this like uh, we might actually win this game. I don't know, <laughs> but he's contented to sit here waiting for the torps to reload again. He's not going to win a gun engagement with this ship. He can't smoke because if he smokes, that'll obviously drop. He's the only one spotting the ship, so that ship would disappear from the screen. There's no point in smoking at this point. The only time you would want to use a smoke in a one-on-one -on -one engagement like this is if you need to disengage and run away and reposition. Now he attempted to use some more torps there to get him, but you'll notice the Alba is pushing back into the same spot he was the first time he captured it, which is right around the other side of this island. Now, this Mutsuki is really close to the island at this point. Dangerous for two reasons. Number one, that plane is going to spot him. It's not going to show on our screen when he is spotted, but I assume right now he probably is. And again, that other ship can use sonar, so both of those are 
ways to or reasons I suppose to stay further away from this. There's no reason for this ship to close in. I think what he's doing he's trying to catch him coming around the corner, which I understand the logic of it. Maybe maybe that's even the correct play, I don't know, but um right now it's a very dangerous situation because that ship is preventing us from fully getting the points out of this and if enough time goes on they'll win on points again so I think this ship needed to really aggressively push the Alba at this point and try and torp them but lo and behold we actually do end up winning on points here so pretty nail biter of a finish but all in all a pretty good game I thought so that's my look at the Gaiety for you. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. A lot of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions for me, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you guys. And we'll see y'all later. Alright, peace.